な。うん。うん。<笑> so, first of all, welcome everyone who's watching this.、Um, this is David Lyon, founder of Evolving Men, with another interview with yeah, two people who are definitely part of the The teachers that inspire me and that I wish to support in these times、um, get their work towards more people. And just as a brief introduction, how I know Gregor and Kumala,、um, I've been working with Gregor as a mentor and therapist for quite some time now. I don't know exactly, actually, like two years maybe. Yeah, something like that. I think、yeah. so. And, and it's actually the first time that, that I get to talk to Gregor's wife, Komala. So, yeah, excited to be in touch with you as well.、Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so what I would love to talk about is this topic of roots and ancestral work and that, how that relates to our current situation. And how people might find support、um, in these topics.、Um, it's something that I definitely touched on in my work with Gregor. That kind of came up as a topic. And actually, <laughs> just as an example, I have these two objects、um, that connect me to my ancestors, to my kind of two、uh, lineages. And I actually hold them in my hands every day. And Rem- like, ask my ancestors to, to support me and remember that they're already behind me. And so, it's actually something that gives me a lot of strength.、Um, and still, there are so many questions around this topic. And so, that's one of the reasons I'm excited to have the two of you on.、Um, especially this piece on, or this contradiction that I sometimes sense between. Kind of doing my own thing, taking off, growing, you know, expanding, flying, and roots. And how, how is it that my roots can actually support that instead of like holding me down, which I think is maybe more often my felt experience?、Mm. Yeah, so w- would love to hear your thoughts on this. And first of all, welcome and good to have you.、Mm. Thank you very much. It's really nice to meet you now directly. I have heard about you through Gregor and that you have us here. Yeah, and a warm welcome to everybody who's watching. And thank you, David,、mm-hmm. for hosting us.、Mm-hmm. And maybe I already start with a moment of ans- with the beginning of the answer to the many questions <laughs> that <laughs> you already brought in. Because, in a way, like What you shared, like that the practice that you're doing with these two objects, in a way, is already the nutshell of a, a very important and I think very, very old ancient wisdom practice that、um, we can do, that we honor in a way where we come from. And it's beautiful, you said, like it's from both lineages. So, in a way, you already speak to this that we are coming from somewhere. And we're moving towards somewhere, like maybe the past、mm-hmm. where we come from and the, the future of our, of our life that we're moving towards.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there is something that calls my attention when you are holding. Also, you have this gesture of holding those objects.、Mm-hmm. Um, there is something about when we are talking about the ancestors, we are talking about the Also, this energy, or also our roots, the energy that has made us, that have created our body.、Mm. In this gesture, like I am feeling my body,、mm. that I'm here, and I'm here right now, and whatever is the movement that I bring forward in my life has a root somewhere, it has come from somewhere.、Mm. It's an energy that is coming before me, is in me right now, in my body. Mm. Can move forward, can fly from here. Yeah. Yeah. But, and maybe just to add on, like also the word roots, when we use that also 
we use that in a way deliberately in the work when we work with um, with ancestors or where we come from because it's interesting when you look at a tree that's what we would we all know a tree has roots but when you see a tree like a beautiful tree that you would enjoy that reaches out into the sky with like a strong branches that's what you see you see the 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 movement of the impulse towards the sky let's see but what you don't visually see is the root network that the tree is connected to and we kind of know but we often maybe forget that it's mm -hmm. it's um, a metaphor for life there is no growth towards something if that is not connected to the root network that gives you the strength and the stability and the nourishment to actually sustain that movement. Mm. I think that's very um, powerful if we, we start to understand that, that these two like movements or, or energies, they're not disconnected. Because often people have this idea, it's a bit of our modern, postmodern kind of uh, trend that we want to be disconnected from the path and I do my own thing, mm. which at some point in life is a very, very important drive that needs to be really <laughs> fully lived in a way. But it has, it has a limit. Like if the tree wants to grow further here, like fly higher, what needs to happen is um, an extension of the roots down, down below. And that always like correlates. So actually often also in personal development or in people's healing or in people's uh, way of finding their own movement in life, very often the piece is not up here only, the piece is to look below. So when you find a reconnection or a healing or a process of deepening your roots, often the next step in your life of your own movement suddenly gets much easier or even becomes possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just one more thing about this is that it's just we cannot go away from our roots. It's just it's an idea. Yeah, uh, I think I, I have a very clear example. I live 30 years, I'm away from my country where I'm born, from Brazil. And I went far away to India into a deep self-exploration. And what actually happened in my exploration when I was then in India is to actually um, work on my roots. I was, I start first deeply working with the connection with my parents. And so knowing my way to fly, my way into opening myself and finding out what is my potential, what are the rainbow of possibilities that's inside of me. Even if I had to go, I, from, in my case, I had to go far away, but I was finding that all inside myself, in my connection with my family, my roots, and this exploration just kept going. And the last 10 years, uh, it started going more deeper into the further ancestry and the more I go, you know, the more I go into this, I, I, I make this gesture because it's roots, but at the same time, it's a sense of, like you said in the beginning, this sense of that there's an energy that is backing me up, that is, 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 is holding me, is creating me. And, and the more I enter this, it's like I have a more and more space opens, more and more creativity and, and also even like more understanding, more inclusion, more understanding about the word and inclusion. So yeah, this is it's exciting. Mm. While I, as while I speak, I get very excited about it. Mm. And I get more and more curious in the last years now, in the last weeks even, I'm discovering more and more things about my great, great, great grandparents wow. and my connection with my land, where I come from, even I'm here living in Austria right now, it's getting just deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And that makes me also even more connected with the earth where I am right now. And, yeah. mm. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> mm, thank you. Wow. I can already see our conversation branching <laughs> into so many different possibilities. I think I would love to name three threads that came up for me and maybe you can pick what, what feels most, most alive for you. Uh, so the first thing that came up even as I was speaking already, but then also when I heard you talk about this kind of the tree metaphor is this sense of like when I don't feel my roots, which has been the case for me for a very long time, it's like being in a vacuum and it's kind of hard to move anywhere. Like there's nothing to kind of, yeah, it feels like, like, like being an alien. I think that's also um, something that, yeah, I think I have it from you, Gregor, that you named it that way, which of course, like that also leads us into the like land of talking about trauma. Um, but just the sense of like, I don't know where I am from. I don't know who I belong to. And that makes it really hard to kind of find any kind of direction, right? So it's just kind of floating around. So that's one piece. Um, one other piece that I found really interesting is this piece on directions. Like Komala, you just said this kind of, okay, the ancestors are kind of in the back and I move forward. And Gregor, you were talking before about like up and down. Mm -hmm. And then like what came up for me as well as this um, idea of heaven and hell. And then heaven is up and hell is down. So it kind of makes sense that we want to go up and away from hell. And yeah, I actually just forgot the third one, but this one actually has the most energy for me right now. It's like, how do you, like, what's the connection between our roots and hell? Like, is there anything where these two, because we kind of both associate them with like being below us, is there a connection between them? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll just start with that. And also the, the question you had first, I'm not, I guess it's going to come in because it's very rich territory in a way. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, and it's good to know also that when we speak about these things, like you said, these are metaphors. These are not concrete. That's how like my ancestors are not standing behind me. Um, but these are ways to, to, visualize with words or directions like maybe energetic um, constellations and they can be debated if it's below or what or up or whatever but it's good to have some some framework first and mm -hmm. at the same time to know that it's not like this we just give you the frame so we can talk about something and then yeah i mean these the there is heaven and there is earth i would say also as a first anchor point before we go to <laughs> 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 but it's interesting even that, that this comes like this because yeah. it's been a strong dichotomy that we yes. know in the western world between um let's go there and let's not go down there um which i think is a, a disconnection that we we're seeing a lot in the world that we have a drive towards um getting somewhere you know technology and achievement and um new ideas and like let's get better faster and get somewhere and be there earlier mm. and losing the contact maybe with with the roots that give us actually the stability and the possibility to breathe out mm. and be somewhere um and there is there's a huge gap already in the world or in the western world how we overemphasized the one and kind of we now it, see it comes it's it comes catches up with us and with the climate crisis or even the, the virus right now is like how much can we get away from something mm. and in order to go somewhere if i don't know where i'm coming from i'm not really having a direction i'm more in a disconnection and i think there is no there is no real question also when we talk about our roots our ancestors it's not a choice. Do I like my past or do I want to be connected to my past? It's not a choice. It's like the tree saying like, okay, I'm going to go out of here. 
forget about my roots. <laughs> it's, it's not an option. But we, sometimes we think that's like an option, hmm. but it is part of, of something that we need, that we can learn to relate to, where sometimes to emphasize this is important in life. You know, when you're a teenager, you need to go away in a way from your roots and to extend, go to another continent. And that's healthy. But if you become stuck in that mode for a whole life, we all probably know people that are still, are teenagers, even near whatever, 50. Which is orientation. Then it, then it becomes like mm. problematic. At the same time, if you're a teenager, let's say, let's stick with these simple terms, and you don't want to leave the house because that's all the world is all my family and I don't want to see what's out there, it also becomes problematic. You know? mm. if, you don't, if you cannot live that drive. And so it's the same in a way like that we need this drive and this orientation to our aspiration, to our innovation, to want to become something, to learn, to find out, to grow, to expand. And, but we need that in contact also with our capacity and our need to relax, mm -hmm. to relate, to feel belonging. Um, because at one point we're, we're like delicate or complex systems. So and if you emphasize one for a very long time and neglect the other, things happen. Mm -hmm. And we see that individually in people, but we see it in a, in a global stage right now. Something's catching up with us right now where it says, well, you know, we still live on a planet here mm -hmm. and just, and we can try to escape to Mars, but <laughs> it will not really change what we are, we are creating for ourselves here right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to go back to that, what you said. I find it very interesting that you mentioned uh, heaven and hell. <laughs> and I think it's good that you said that because that's so much how we have been many times connecting with, um, with the below or the underground as like uh, uh, something that we don't want to go into, something we are afraid of. Sinful. Yeah, mm. like something to, yeah. It's, and, and this is, is so much related also, in a way, so much to the, in a way, to the feminine in some way. It's like, mm. yeah, mm. This, this, the earthy thing, the things which are very psychical, emotional, and um, not easy to relate, uh, in a way, rationally. Yeah. Um, yeah and uh, yeah and so this this had become really like in a way a, a big separation and then the underground or even like the unconscious had become hell mm. <laughs> and which mm. something which is otherwise actually an, an universe like in the, in the underground or the underworld is is also a term very much used in shamanism or not a term is a is a word that we can mm. enter actually it's it's a it's like a, a entire universe that when that we can enter through our bodies like uh, is, is a it has to do with our instincts it has to do that's the place where we actually meet our our ancestors even our, our animal ancestors which means also our instincts our our capacity to respond to life very directly and, and so this, this division has to do very much with the disconnection from this more uh, earthy mm. part of ourselves and instinctual feminine and uh, yeah. Mm. Yes, and interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And maybe one more thing just to add to what you brought in as the first question. So this, what you describe like probably a lot of people know this feeling like sometimes feeling like an alien and uh, I don't belong I don't know where I'm at home and like and like like drifting like the rational <laughs> the rational hell in a way like I'm just like a random speck in a meaningless universe I mean that's as bleak as life as you can get 
and we all been there maybe to some degree i know that mm. and um and it's very much a, a modern phenomenon i think and it's not just a bad thing but we have to understand that we 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 learned or we through all our development and evolution we learned that we could separate ourselves from something so much that we really feel separate mm -hmm. and kind of a cool thing because it's like okay then i can choose maybe <laughs> And uh, we come to that, I think, in a bit still. Um, and at the same time, it's like it can feel so alone and meaningless. And I think this this really is a. I think we're coming to a renaissance, like a bit like the after the postmodern age now of everything goes, whatever I want is, I'll, I'll, that's that's right. Where we seem to reconnect with this. Even the, the current situation of the corona pandemic, I think, does that, that it shows us the interconnectedness of all life. Mm -hmm. That when I think I am an in like disconnected part of life, it's um it's not a it's not a reality that we're feeling. It's a symptom of disconnection. And the funny thing is that even when you disc when you feel disconnected from your past, from your parents, from other people, from meaning, you are in a connection to that. But you're you're in a disconnected contact. So yeah. your 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 contact is one of disconnection, but that's already a, a contact. You're not like it's like you closed the pipe, but still the pipe is there because otherwise you don't even live. There's nothing in life that can live. It just doesn't. It's not the way life is set up in a way. Mm. I think to understand this, or when I'm feeling this, what you described, in a way, it's an invitation to to reassess what do I need. Maybe how I also was born into a certain family culture whatever that has maybe a lot of disconnection built in already because you, you spoke of trauma and like a lot of like we were often born already in in family systems or cultural systems that had a lot of um trauma which means disconnection in order to protect life so often that is already the the way we experienced contact is like separate and distant and disconnected Mm -hmm. But again, this is always in the work that we do. This is an invitation to understand, ah, this is my contact. And through making that aware, actually, I become part of that system again. And then also, when I'm part of a system, I also have the capacity to, to influence the system, which is my family, where I came from, but also then... I start to actually have a choice of how I want to influence my life and where it is going. Mm -hmm. Because often, maybe the last thing I want to say here is that I hear this sometimes from people like, yeah, just look forward, you know? I don't want to look into the past and I just look forward, I set my goals. No regrets. Sorry? Like no regrets, like forget the past. Forget it doesn't, it shouldn't past. hold you back. Right. And it's, Again, at some point in life, this can be very, very meaningful, powerful, and the right thing to do. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, sometimes this comes out of a mindset that thinks you can really do that in a way to disconnect and let it be mm. and just go forward. But when we do that, we don't understand that then you look already with the glasses of your past towards your future you will see not a free space where you can choose where you go. You just go actually with the conditioned um, patterns that you inherited from your family. And suddenly you will ask yourself, why the hell, how the hell did I end up here again? <laughs> how the hell? <laughs> how the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so then the past is catching up with you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and usually that will come then as, as symptoms also in, in our bodies and also 
symptoms in the way we relate to people in our relationships and even uh, maybe our relationships with our work or and and that's all that can be then an entrance for us to start looking okay where where it, because this is like a, a what we experience then is like an indigested uh, energy somehow that we experience which can happen in different ways and then when i look i can look into that where do where do i know that where that is also coming from mm. Where, where have I, in a way that's then part of how we work, where have I experienced uh, disconnection? You know, mm. Enter then my, my family system. Mm. I can look there. What, what are the patterns that I find today in myself that I keeps on repeating? And even I do all kinds of different things and I'm looking to things, but things are keep on not moving. Still the pattern is there. That's a very, very good moment to really look away. There is something much larger. There is a, a place, uh, a bigger field from where there is something, where something started, yes. probably. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's then when we go back into the past, we can see a lots of, of uh, we get lots of cues of what we are maybe experiencing right now that does, keeps on not, cannot move in, no matter what I do. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this actually what you just said, Komala, makes me understand more what Gregor just said about, about like the, the disconnection or the whatever the struggle is the entry point yes. to, exactly. to connecting to my ancestors. And yeah, I'm really touched by this I, I really didn't think about this, like the, that you brought in the feminine Komala and, and it made me think a lot about, wow, you know, in the heaven and hell, there's so clearly a good and bad. Whereas in many, you know, if I think about yin and yang, both, both are equally important, but it, it, it kind of starts to dawn the kind of, thinking that we grew up in like separating two things that are that need each other and kind of saying oh okay so uh, achieving whatever you want this kind of i can do whatever i want is better than uh, i'm embedded in a larger network and i'm connected and and also this kind of the abundance of what is here already versus reaching something right? Like there's a strong emphasis of keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And without this, it keeps on being a lack, something is missing. And it just really makes me think of, wow, we must have been so terribly wounded in yeah. this, in this, uh, you know, sense of being part of something, because why otherwise would we leave that? It's so important. It's so nourishing. Right. Yeah, I, I think partly is, is, is there is a bone there, part is also a, a, also a drive, is also a natural longing to expand and to, mm. and to get to go further. And uh, because again, like as, as Gregor said a few times, this, this like going away from where I come from was fundamental for me to, to see something else. And then even to be able to see <laughs> my family and mm -hmm. that where I come from in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those kind of uh, movements are happening again and again in one, when one is in, really in a movement of growth. Again, it's like I may, might connect with a certain group of a, a new tribe where I get really identified. And again, I feel like, ah, oh, now I found my, I, 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 that <laughs> happened to me again. <laughs> I found my roots now here in India. <laughs> and that feels like amazing. This is my family. This is where I belong. And, and, and then again, I get into this. <sighs> it's again, it's like, mm. it's like a rest in the, the mother's lap, you mm. know, that feminine embrace mm. of where I can now finally <sighs> breathe mm. out. And that is amazing. And that is like a moment then of rejuvenation and a moment of regeneration. And, and then 
if I keep on moving, if I keep on growing, if I keep on uh, inquiring, there will be most probably a time uh, where again, like, ah, now I, I reach the, the barriers where my container feels again small. Mm. Like my, it's again like, oh, this family now is a bit like it's... Uh, uh, the surrounding and, becoming yeah. too limiting. Yeah. Or, mm. And then growth. I need to go again, like a new movement. I have to now leave this family and find... And, and then it's like a continuous process, I believe, until I guess something gets more integrated. Mm. As long as there is something that still wants to to move and develop and needs to grow and expand, it's going to be happening this. And then again, and even within this movement of expanding, that's the question that how to find in that movement is still that sense of mm. ground mm. connection that gives me orientation even while I'm moving. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, and I think what Kamala speaks to is like this, that these, these two drives, I mean, they, they're named in different traditions in different ways, but this one that I, I have a, a drive, like the more masculine principle, we could say to, to expand and to grow, to, to also make life new, like the evolutionary drive, you know, like not same, same, but like there is really an update, a change. And, something else comes into the world that's fascinatingly exciting and this other drive that we always need the connection back to life that is is not just growing 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 but also what i ex what i experience or invent in a way comes back and supports the whole life and the whole network where i come from yeah. and the network strengthens me so they're not they're not really opposite but mm. we're one symptom of Trauma is always this connection, and, and then we always tend to have the feeling yeah. we have to choose this or that. Yes. If I do this, I sacrifice that. If I move to a relationship, all the other women I will not date now anymore. Or if I will then go on being an open relationship, but I miss the, 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 the safety of one relationship. Like we have these kind of splits everywhere, and it's not about finding out what's the right one. It's like Asking, so which one is the right hand? I mean, it's the right and the left. You <laughs> want? I need both. You know, mm. because they're they make me me both. Yeah. So this the way like to to find this kind of reconciliation more and more, maybe in the heart mm. that I don't need to choose, and I I have maybe times I'll emphasize this or that more. But I, I don't need to choose fundamentally what which is right in me. I can trust these drives in me. Yeah. And and then I think we have to see that we we live what I said before. Uh, like we 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 all have experienced places where our belonging, where we come from, maybe our like family of origin, or even our early structures of peers in school and so forth that these places were were often not supportive for us so we've been wounded in there like you said and then also then maybe gives the feeling oh i can get away from that so it, it i can get away also from the pain that i experienced there mm -hmm. but that doesn't work eventually like and then often in trauma, like we, we start to become very fast in running or adapting or, or compensating. Mm -hmm. But then it gets always, I need to always start to run faster and faster. And then the healing movement is that I can, with skill, and maybe that often needs a bit of support, start to understand, ah, this is actually the invitation here. And then there is something that heals in myself and I bring healing to the whole world in a way when I turn back to that mm. and, see. and also that it's not always then just looking at the trauma or the pain in the family or in the lineages, just, just at the pain, but there's a lot of support and strength 
that we would otherwise not connect to. Like you said in the beginning, very beautiful, you said, well, it gives me a lot of strength to feel these two objects. Mm -hmm. I think that's the invitation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just one more thing. Certainly there is a lot of pain also in, in our roots and in our history, uh, personally, collectively. And, um, and that can be partly why there is a resistance also to go there. Yeah? Because yes, we, 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 we rather keep it down, the, the underground in the underworld. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there's, there was something you'd said about this, like having perspective. And, and that's, that's the thing, and that's the work. The more we are able to have more and more and more space and more perspective, then we, when we go back or we go into this underworld, we meet also, like I said now, an immense richness of resources, mm -hmm. support. Of, of energy that is actually our the base of our life energy so um, when we are connecting this is very much what we want to work with and how we do the work is to go back to to to, to get the nourishment that is present there mm. first it's like and, and, to, to, and then to have this, this capacity to see that everything is there. Yes, there is pain, there is disconnection, there is fear. All of this is part of it. And there is, at the same time, like all interwoven with it, there's an immense uh, source of life energy. Mm -hmm. And that by, by tapping, by, by connecting, by feeling, receiving through our bodies, these energies, we create the space that then also the, the entangled parts, the painful, the, the hurt part, have space mm. to open, to expand, to, to be seen, to be felt, to be... And then that's how, it's like what happens in the body with trauma. And that then there is a space for the nervous system mm -hmm. to, to, to something to digest and to, to be released. So mm -hmm. this can happen out as well in our roots, in our energy that is coming before us. And then it becomes available for myself right now. And that's again mm -hmm. what we can bring forward. Mm -hmm. And that this maybe. Mm -hmm what we this is maybe the freedom we are really longing for that not the freedom to be away from something but the freedom to yeah. be really? really in contact with something because when we really like sometimes maybe it's a misconception that when we say we connect with our roots we have this old fear that we maybe had as children that we had to um comply with, with our families or with our rules and patterns that we had no choice, that we had to, to be there because as children, mm -hmm. you can't really run away. I mean, you can, but it has terrible consequences. But now as an adult with my adult consciousness, when I look back and I kind of, like in German, there's a beautiful word, zustimmen, when I kind of like, like um, say, yes, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. I don't comply that these are the choices that I would make. On the contrary, I would maybe make very different choices. But I, I say yes to that this is where I come from. And I take the energy that is in there and I kind of transmute it into a life force that now then is available for me to really make choices. And I think that's an um, important principle of healing that, 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 that we meet in there and that freedom is often different than what we <laughs> that what our mind would would try to sell it to us yeah mm. there are two things I'm really touched by one is so this 
again, it's such, for me, it's such a symptom of this kind of separation that, and that's the second point about language, but maybe I'll start first here. This, oh, there's so much pain in my roots. And then that somehow means that there's nothing else there, that that's the only thing that I will find. But it's kind of like, maybe even something like because there's pain, it's also a sign that there's a lot of energy because otherwise it might just be like nothing. Exactly. exactly. But it actually says like there is life there. It's mm -hmm. in a contracted form, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, actually a movement that I've experienced so much in the past few weeks. It's in this kind of surrender which again is a, this part of this feminine that we kind of uh, suppress in our culture of surrendering to that which is uncomfortable and suddenly things open up that I would have never been able to access if I would have kept on trying to run in the other direction. And it's, it's such a mind fuck. And so <laughs> on, that, on that point, it's, it really touched me, Gregor, when you were talking about the hands and you said, there is no right one because it so points to the limits of our language. It so points to how there is, in a way, trauma encoded in our language. There's separation in our language. And so many of these ideas of good and bad and so on, we constantly reproduce in our language, and it's, it's so hard to get out. Right. And maybe I just want to, there's many points yeah. again. <laughs> See us like, smiling here, getting excited. <laughs> That's but the I, point, actually, what we talked about now. Is right. And I, but I want just to highlight one thing when you said about energy. Like, you know, it's good for us all to, to, to realize when we sit here, we sit here because our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents and so forth through all the lines and it's many generations that came before us through the beginning of time made it. They survived until a certain point so that they could pass on life to us. Me sitting here is the consequence of an enormous amount of lives that have came before us. That's even like in a, the shamanic traditions, the way I understand it, the definition of an ancestor is that which came before me or has more experience than I do. It's not even just about time who's older, but like what I can lean on. And in this stream of life, there's all wounds and patterns and traumas and pain, but there is also the whole wisdom of life encoded in it. Mm. To survive, to thrive, to create families, to create love, to create abundance. All of what we know as life comes through that. So when we, also for times that we're living right now, where there's a lot of, uh, change let's say need to adapt or to to be flexible this is not the first time humanity goes through something like this it's been going on all the time and our ancestors know something about that and then in the way we work this is something i can directly ask for support or metaphorically or i can just like um like lean on that without knowing what it really is but i just lean it's like i let myself be in that river mm. and then it's a lot harder when you have to do everything by yourself you know when you have copyright for life it's like fucking hard mm. and then about this this that we know about change no like when you mentioned now no that we are living now also through this through this time of change and sometimes we we feel quite disoriented um like we we do know uh, one way that we we also like to connect and talk about ancestors is like uh like i said before also our it's our mothers parents grandparents and so on and and also uh the our anim the animals are our ancestors and the earth the the, the nature and that i really love to have this remembering that the earth which we are all standing on right now uh, it's uh, it had gone through so many changes it's like it's mm -hmm. our first ancestor one of the first mm -hmm. before we ever exist as humans mm -hmm. the 
the earth has been here, the same one, just changing and going through changing and train changes and movements and cycles. And, and, and that's, it's a metaphor, but it's also a reality. <laughs> yeah. And in a way to, to, to remember that, to remember as a felt sense, like, yeah, this, we are in a cycle as a person, as my, my own being, but as a, also as a, a humanity, as like we are in a constant movement. And that's like, like it gives a frame also for, for, for life. Mm. So, so that's one thing. And, and I just want to go back because to what you mentioned before, because I, this for me is the, I think is the base of our work or my work is that what we meet as pain, what we meet as problems are doorways is actually contracted energy. And when I am able to mobilize, mobilize my, my resources and I'm able to get the support I need to be able to look, to feel, to relate to those parts in me, in another, in the world, then we create the possibility for movement. That, and then that which is a contraction, which is a pain, which is a trauma, becomes actually energy available. And it's actually, it's a lot, like you said, it's a lot of energy. Mm. And then also, as you said, you have experienced that this is something I've experienced again and again mm. and again in my life. That whenever I was able to, to really feel into a certain feeling, into my fear, or I really let that be alive in my body, I can breathe into it, I can um, relate to it, it's always more energy, more space, more capacities that becomes available. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the same thing that's when we go back to our ancestors and we really connect with our lineages and the history, also my own, but what we also uh, share as humanity, our collective uh, of as humanity, yeah. There is always the possibility, and it's, uh, of course, it's a big, big work also, mm -hmm. but is that we can create space for that energy to, to move and to become available. Mm. Great. Mm. And that doing this is, again, is a very, it needs skill and it needs support. It, it doesn't mean like um, just close the eyes and plunge head on and try to feel through everything. It's, it's like this skillfully turning towards our pain mm -hmm. and to learn in a way, a new way of relating to that. So then rather than what I'm always already doing, like mm -hmm. uh, too much avoiding running away or some people are like yeah. head on battling mm -hmm. with every day long. But that's more of what, where, how we create then ongoing problems. So when something new comes in, in the way I relate to it, that's where healing happens. And this is really interesting when one works with the ancestors, that you start to see that very often what people experience in their own lives already has happened somewhere before. Mm. And it's like, like the like some people call like the trauma train is like still running through the generations until mm. somebody mm. finds the resources and the willingness and the heart and the support to that we even can do because sometimes it's so big or so painful that we can't even we we think we can but we can't mm. and that's also to be respected yes. but sometimes then that you have to support it you suddenly can see it's like wow that's been happening and like your awareness comes online, it's like, wow, you see it. And you can also like your heart comes online in your body and you start to like, wow, that's how it must have felt. Mm. And, then, and then healing is not, again, it's not just a, um, an individual affair. It's like the, the network of life heals. Mm. And there's something beautiful. I had a conversation with one of my mentors in this work, um, 
a teacher is in constellation work and she said what she's often remembering when she works with this because when you work also with family systems there's often a lot of painful and very like like unimaginable stories and, and life situations that people bring in it's like i mean you go back in europe or any place one two three generations it's, it's like unimaginable sometimes and then a lot of the stuff that people are suffering is often like trying to get away from that pain, like you described, mm -hmm. but that creates more and more problems. And, and so she says she remembers often uh, like a saying from Sen that says, already wet, which in a way means you're already wet. So often we're trying to not get wet. It's like, oh, wet. <laughs> like, and I need to go with an umbrella and the wet suit and like, but you're already wet. It's like, and it's, it's kind of fun when you're in life, it already has happened or a yes. lot has already happened. Yes. And of course, it's like when you're in a heavily traumatized situation or in an acute situation, it's often you need something else first. You need to get to safety, absolutely. But when we have a more relative safety and capacity to look towards where we already are wet or what already has happened sometimes can be really like a powerful shift of like wow it's it's there it's it's i can feel it i can see it and i'm i'm part of life you know and that what people get often so touched when when you when you can really relate to what somebody else went through not mm -hmm. just from your mind because often we know the stories but we don't know the inside <clears throat> world when you start relating to that it's so touching yeah. Yeah, it's it's deeply heart opening that's what mm -hmm. experience always it's like when people are ready and really wanting to do that work and uh yeah it's in and to meet those places in oneself is just like there's a and gets deeply touched it's mm -hmm. very it's beautiful mm -hmm. I have one last question and then I would love to, to wrap our conversation up and, and hear how people can dive deeper with you. Um, it's something that came up for me when you were speaking, Komala, since I'm, you know, you were talking about these cycles that these in a way eternal cycles that are there and that we're part of. The question that comes up for me is like, I don't even know if there's an answer, but I'm still curious to hear your thoughts on, okay, so we have these cycles, which I associate more with the feminine. And then, but that's not the only thing. There's still like a, there's emotion somewhere, right? And, and it's this like, <laughs> my mind cannot hold this like, how do they give, what do we do with these two? Or like, how, how do they, you know, I have thoughts come up, but it doesn't feel really like I cannot feel in my body. How, how do these like cycles and this direction somewhere, how do these two go hand in hand or, you know, what's the integration of these two? <laughs> so maybe I just uh, share with you the image that comes to me when you speak about, when you ask that question. Yeah. I have this image of uh, like a spiral mm. that's moving, constantly moving, and it's going up. Mm. You know? and, and, and that's very much how I, how I also see uh, like self-development. Also, I have experienced that. It's like, yeah, you keep on moving. And in a way, you also, and in a way you also touch all these places which is, seems quite similar or... Mm. We also, also people who go through self-development, we feel, oh, I'm again in this place. Yeah? <laughs> but, but if we really look, if we really look, it's never the same place. Yeah. It's, 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 it, we might touch the same place because there is a certain maybe pattern that we need to look again and again and again. But yes. we look again and again with a different point, per, from a different perspective. Yes. And... Mm. 
So this is somehow what comes to me. And then it's like, yeah, it's a cyclical, but it's keeping you moving uh, also with a direction. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I would have the same, the same image in my mind. And then to be what I am, let's say, trying to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, from a maybe more transpersonal dimension to look at this or a mystical perspective I can speak of this is to see when I'm when I'm having questions about time there's sometimes like at least I know that well like something built in that says like how long will it take mm. or how long does that how long do I have to still work on this or ah oh, this is coming in I thought I already did that you know but there is there will like again there's something i experience that i don't want mm. some degree mm. and then i ask so how long does it go like how, how how much more of this and i think it's very good to be gentle with that and compassionate but also to be like ah there's a process i can turn towards and then sometimes we don't have mental answers for questions yeah. we have experiences that fully encompasses the question and then the question kind of loses its grip or its urgency. Nice. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to share what came up while you were speaking and then, then maybe we, we wrap up. Um, I was thinking about uh, different dimensions. And so if I look at the spiral from, from like a two dimensional perspective, it's a circle. And so once I have three dimensions, I see it's, you know, it's moving up. And then what comes to me is like, and maybe there are even more dimensions. And then, you know, like, <laughs> you know, there is this motion, but we still kind of, we still touch these same points. And, and then that's where, again, our language gets completely, you know, it just doesn't work anymore. But it's, ah, it's so, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. That's Makes and it opens us to something yes. that we don't can't we, we can't fix with names, but we can yeah and be in awe about. Yeah. Thank you. This has been <laughs> very enlivening. I really appreciate hearing the two of you. Mm. Um, yeah. Also, dance with each other, kind of build on each other. I'm really, really enjoying that. Um. Yeah, as I said, I would love to hear, like, how can people who listen to this who are like, whoa, maybe I don't understand everything that was said, um, but I somehow feel drawn to this. Uh, what are possibilities for them to, to stay in touch, to go deeper? So one thing that we are currently doing is a workshop format that's called The Rights to Be, that kind of uh, brings all the things that we touched on into um, a weekend format. Um, right now, given the situation, we cannot meet with people in um, one room, but we, we do meet in a, in a virtual room. So we're also actually from the 8th to the 10th of May um, this year, which is in a week's time. Um, we're offering this uh, as an online interactive workshop. And for us, it's very important that it's not just, we're not just talking about it, we then really give a, um, an interactive workshop experience where we really work with that. Yeah. So the, the, our idea with that workshop is to do as much as possible what we will do in a, <laughs> in a workshop where we are in the same space. Yeah. And, and as we are working a lot with fields, you know, like field ancestors is connected with a certain field, uh, it can be very, very interesting also when we meet in this way, like we are meeting now, to really, to really feel that this is real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no? that yeah. right, like right now, we are sitting here in Austria. You are also in Austria, but in a different place, I guess. You are in Austria. Yeah, not so far, actually. <laughs> yeah. It feels like, you know, like time somehow is a different sense of space. That it, I mean, we can really meet, we can really connect here now. And so that's what we want to, to really experience through the workshop. And we do that by really like, we're gonna do exercise, we're gonna dance, we're gonna mm. create our family 
um, structure and really work with that as if we are in the same space, which we are. Yeah. <laughs> Just a different dimension or different <laughs> <way> of <laughs> being in the same space. And it's been really interesting doing this on this work online now because also then people that would otherwise not yes. join, like from America, mm. people are logging in or from mm. Asia. It's very rich because one of the like it's amazingly touching always when you're in a group together and people bring in where they come from, you know, what your parents uh, went through and where your life is taking you now. It's very, very, like it makes the, the room intimacy. just, yeah, it creates intimacy. Mm. And we have, we work with kind of work from constellation work, from systemic rituals. So we bring in things to allow people to find their own way to draw these resources from the ancestral field and to get more clarity about the patterns that we inherited and that live in us. And so that, that is one way and we do um, different workshops. So that concept of working with uh, the heaven and the earth, <laughs> the, the heaven and the, and the hell, <laughs> parts of ourselves is always there, whatever yeah. we do. Yeah. And so if people are curious to find out more, um, they can also go to our website, which is integralbeing.at and komalamorim.com. Yeah. We'll, put, we'll put everything in the, in the description so people don't have to remember that. Uh, yeah. Wow. And thank, yeah, you, be... thank you very much for mm. this. It's, uh, it's, it's really great to have this inspiration because your curiosity, mm. <laughs> because your questions are not just questions, it's really like you, you really yeah, spread that and mm. <laughs> it's very interesting to talk mm. about. Yeah, and that's already what we what we experience in the work. Without this, without other people there, mm. creating mutual interest, creating safety, and Questions. creating feedback, you can't do that much. But when that comes here, boom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gregor. In the end, for naming this piece on you know the advantages of doing this online, because I think it's also good to acknowledge that. Besides, like all the downsides and. Yeah, so for anyone who is listening to this, who feels called, we'll definitely put everything in the description. And yeah, one thing that came up for me as well is that, you know, maybe you cannot join who's watching this, but maybe you can, you know, share it, forward it, if you if you feel the resonance to do that. It's also a way to support the work of Theba and Kumala. Yes, and mm -hmm. for thanks for everybody listening. Yes, and thanks uh, everybody. Thank be you. Be happy to meet you somewhere on the path of this life mm. Yay. sometime. Mm.